Hi gang, Scott Davenport here. In this video, we're going to talk about camera presets in On One Photo Raw. This is a new feature in Photo Raw 2021. I'll show you how they work, and I'm going to share a few gotchas with them, some things you just need to be aware about when you're using them because that might surprise you, and you don't want to have uh, unexpected results when you turn on one of these camera profiles. Really quick, if you're thinking about adding on one to your toolkit, maybe you're upgrading from another version, check the show notes. I've got an offer code there. It'll save you about 20% on the purchase price. And if you use it, it gives me a little bit of help too. No cost to you. It helps support other tutorials like this one. So let's have a look at camera presets. So as its name suggests, camera preset is a combination of a preset with a camera. Let's make sure we cover what a preset is. I think we all know. But just to make sure, a preset is a collection of settings, and we have access to those right here in Browse. You can see I have this purple tint sunset preset. It applies certain settings. Looks like it does some effects. It adds a few different effects to this particular photo. So I've made an adjustment just by clicking on a preset where a camera preset comes in is I can associate a preset, a stylistic preset with a particular camera. And then every time a photo captured with that camera is seen in browse, that preset will be automatically applied. So you may already be jumping ahead with me here. I would not want to do something like purple tint sunset to every photo that I capture with a particular camera body. These are really more for fundamentals, basic things. If you know that you always need a little bit of a temperature adjustment on photos taken with a particular camera, or you always click the auto button when you're starting your processing just to get a baseline for your black point, white point, highlights, shadows, those things. Those are great for camera presets. The more you know, wilder stylistic things, not so much because as you kill, we'll see actually here, I've captured many different kinds of photos with the camera I use to capture this purple tint sunset. So where do we associate a camera with a preset that is in the preferences. In the files tab, we have a default processing section at the bottom. We have two things we can do. Apply lens corrections to our raw photos. That's been in the product for a while. And then we have this new grid. All the different cameras that have been used in my photographic history as far as on one is concerned, all the different digital cameras I've used. Their serial numbers if available. And I'll come back to that in a moment. And then you can associate a preset and the type of file that the preset would be applied to automatically. For this first camera, A7R, Sony A7R, I can choose to apply any of my stylistic presets. Let's just pick that one for the moment. To RAW files, JPEG files, or both RAW and JPEG that are captured by this camera. Now my serial numbers aren't showing up on my Sony camera. I do have a question out to on one about what's going on there. Because if you own multiple bodies of the same camera, like I own multiple A7R2 bodies, I would expect to see more than one entry, one for each serial number, meaning I can associate a preset with a particular camera body. This is not a model-based preset, it's a camera-based preset. So the camera body, its model plus serial number is a unique camera, and I should be able to associate a preset with a unique camera. So I expect there's a bug, and they're going to fix that for me, and I'll be able to see that here. Sorry to interrupt. I talked to On1 since I did the first recording, but before I put it on YouTube, which is great. It turns out the serial number thing, it's not a problem with Photo Raw. It's a problem with the Sony cameras. They do not record the serial number in the EXIF data. They record some weird thing called an internal serial number, which unfortunately does not match any serial number visible on the camera, which makes it pretty much not very useful for a camera preset type of feature. So that's the story with Sony cameras. Your, your camera, you may still want to ask on one, see if it's something that they might be able to work into the software. All right, back to the video. Now, before I go and click OK on this, I'm going to click Cancel because I want to 
get a view of all of my A7R photos, and explain a couple more things about what's going to go on when we associate a preset with a camera. So let's get a view. In my advanced search, I have a filter here for just my A7R photos. And there's quite a bit of difference here. I see some color ones. We see some that are processed. We see some that are infrared. So what's going to happen when we pick a preset and associate it with a camera? Well, the first thing that will happen is for all of your catalog folders, on one's going to look through all of the photos captured with that camera. And if it has no processing applied to it, it will apply the preset. If it already has processing, it'll be skipped over. So in this case here, like the first seven photos, I have done processing on these already. The default preset will not be applied. So you're not going to go and mess up your older photos that you have already processed. You will, though, affect any photo that has not been processed. And that be automatically done for your catalog folders. If you browse into just any other folder with photos in it, and there's one from this camera you've associated a preset with, that preset will be automatically applied. So let's do, uh, let's do this. Um, I have these infrared photos, and infrared is something that needs some certain special processing for sure. Let me pick on this one here. I'll apply the preset in browse first. You know, I've got a, just in my sandbox area, I have something for basic infrared. So I'll click on that. We'll see the thumbnail get updated. And I've just done my fundamentals, basically made sure that my channel mixer is doing a black and white infrared, you know, swap there. And maybe it pops the auto button to give me a little bit of contrast. Now, since I have a converted camera, this is a great use case for a camera preset. I'm only going to be taking infrared photos with this camera forevermore. So let's go into the preferences. And in the Files tab, my A7R, my preset, which was in my sandbox, infrared, black and white. I only need to apply that to raw files. Now when I click OK, on one's going to go look through all of my cataloged folders, find all the photos that were captured with this A7R. We've got a view of that already. If it's been processed already, it won't be touched. If it's unprocessed and raw, it will have this black and white infrared preset applied. So I click OK. And we see some changes, right? Those first seven photos, not touched. Great. My infrared photos applied the preset. Great. What I wanted. This one here, these lanterns, that was not an infrared photo, but I'd never done any processing on it. It fell into this category of no adjustments applied, captured with that camera, it gets the preset applied. So that's a bit of a gotcha, you know, so you do need to choose your default preset a little carefully. And this will happen if you have a large set of cataloged photos. I mean, I'm only looking at a little sample library here with, you know, a half a dozen, a dozen photos that match this camera. But if you've got hundreds and hundreds and many of them have never been processed, well, every one of them is going to go out and get touched. And there is no undo button. So that's another gotcha with this. There's no undo. I can't just say, oops, I didn't mean that. Please unassociate this and go back and remove everything. That's it. It's one and done. And so if I made a big mistake, I've got a lot of cleanup on my hand. So be careful when you turn this on. Now, the next gotcha, this other thing that's going to, to trip you up if you're not thinking through it. I had this photo here, right? This color photo and I did not want that to be adjusted. So I okay, go, okay, great. I'll go up into my settings. I'll say reset all settings. And I wait and I sit, and nothing's happening. Why not? I have a default camera preset that's assigned. So what happened? The settings got removed. The preferences say go apply this preset to any unprocessed photo taken with this A7R camera and apply it. 
So it looks like nothing happened. A bunch of stuff happened in the background and I end up at the same place. So you can't just go in and reset the settings and clear them out. You'll need to go into edit and change sliders and you know reset things in a different way. You can't just clear all the settings. You'll clear them out and then reapply the camera preset again. So uh, I'm going to go back into my preferences and now turn off that camera preset, return it to my default, say OK. Nothing changes. All I've said is for the, for the future, any photos that have not been processed, uh, you can apply that. And now I can do that reset, all settings. I'm you know, back to uh, you know, kind of a semi-expected behavior, uh, but you know, really, um, that is that is how camera presets operate. And so, uh, to review one more time, you can set them up in the preferences in files. You can do it per camera. And if your serial numbers are showing up and you have multiple bodies, you should see entries for each one of them. If you do not, please let on one know so they can fix that up. The more serial numbers that get recognized, the more models that get recognized, the better this experience will be. You can choose any preset to apply, and you can specify RAW, JPEG, or both. So that is camera presets. They're cool. They have their place. With specialty cameras, I think they make a lot of sense. Like an infrared camera, there are certain things that always need to be done to an infrared photo. You put that into a preset, you associate it with a camera body, and every time you have a new photo, those things will be applied for you and it just moves your workflow along faster. But there are, I'll say, three gotchas with camera presets. Number one, they will be applied to any unprocessed photo that matches the camera and the file type that you select. So you associate a preset with one camera body and the raw photos from it. As soon as you click OK, on one's going to go through all of your catalog folders, find the unprocessed ones for that camera, apply that preset. And if you browse to another folder, if you have unprocessed photos that match that camera, the preset will be applied. Maybe that'll be good for you, it may work, but it does mean you need to choose your preset carefully. Don't choose something very wild because you'll probably create more work for yourself by having to go change and undo things. You know, and that's actually gotcha number two. There's no undo for applying a camera preset. Once you're in that files tab, you click OK and you associate a preset to a camera. For your catalog folders, it's off to the races on ones back there doing all those changes, applying everything. So choose your preset carefully because if you want to undo it, you're going to have to go visit those photos and undo it yourself. And the third gotcha is more of a, a behavioral surprise. When you reset adjustments, if you have a camera profile associated with the camera, that's your new default. And so you reset and it doesn't quite look like a flat raw file or something. It's because in the background, the reset happened and then the preference kicked in and the camera preset was applied. So that's the story of uh, camera presets. I hope this uh, demystified it, unpacked it for you a bit more. Got any questions, go ahead and drop them below. I'll do my very best to answer them. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.